Good afternoon, everyone. Folks, uh, this is just to give you notice. This lecture is being recorded. If you have any concern, you need to contact me, please. Now, today, we are going to start uh, a new topic, which is uh, event tree analysis. Event tree analysis. Now I will define this uh, event tree analysis then I will go into the mathematical uh, calculation. The event tree is a graphical tool the event tree is a graphical tool which is used to explore possible consequences of an undesired event this undesired event in event tree analysis is what we call as initiating event In most of the textbook, you will see it is written as IE, not all, but most of the textbook, you will see this as IE. I have a second definition for the event tree analysis or event tree. is a diagram that defines the potential sequences associated with a particular initiating event ie the sequence
choose the success and failure of the barriers these barriers in the inventory analysis are called as safety systems In some of the literature, you will see it is also called as safety function. Safety functions. Another name for these barriers is protection layer. So these are the different names that you can see in different creatures. So the event tree is a diagram that defines the potential sequences associated with a particular initiating event, i.e. the sequence shows the success and failure of the barriers. The barriers are also called safety systems, safety functions or protection layers. Now this event tree analysis is used in probabilistic risk assessment. It is used in probabilistic risk assessment folks i need to go to the next slide please Now, if you recall in uh, fault tree analysis, in fault uh, tree analysis, FTA, we were concerned failure of our top event. If this is uh, our top event, if you recall, this was the symbol that we were using for the top event, and you will have your fault tree here. Now, this fault it was used. Uh, to determine primary causes or basic events that caused the failure of your topic that caused the failure of top event. In case of uh, event tree analysis, In case of event tree analysis, we have an initiating event.
instead of top event. In the event tree analysis, it shows what possible what possible consequences can be resulted from the initiating event from the initiating event ie so it shows that it shows uh, what possible consequences can be resulted from the initiating event possible consequences possible consequences are based on occurrence or non occurrence of a sequence of events or success or failure of sequence of components so it could be either occurrence or non occurrence or it could be either success or the failure that's what we need to figure out in our event tree analysis Books, I need to go to the next slide, please. This slide, I will explain you what are the steps in event tree analysis. So let's write down the steps which are involved in event tree analysis. The first step is we define or identify an accident. This is A. And that is what we are calling as the initiating event. That may develop
अनवॉन्टेड और अनडिजाइड कंसिक्वेंसेस सो वट इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप वी डिफाइन और आइडेंटिफाई एक्सीडेंट विच इज कार्ड इनिशियटिंग इवेंट दैट मीन डिवेलप अनवॉन्टेड और अनडिजाइड कंसिक्वेंसेस Now the second step is identify the barriers in safety and risk engineering these are called safety barriers in place to deal with to deal with the accidental event the third step is we develop graphical sketch of event tree the fourth step is describe the accident sequence accident sequence the fifth step is the frequency or probabilities of the barriers in event tree the sixth step is determine the frequency or probabilities
for the identified consequences. And these consequences are what we call as the outcomes. So the sixth step is determine the frequency or probabilities for the identified consequences or the outcomes. This is C here. Folks, I need to go to the next slide, please. The last step is the number seven. Here we check our results. Check results accuracy. Results uh, accuracy. Now, if I take you back uh, here in these steps, this step number three, develop the graphical sketch of uh, inventory. There are some rules associated with this. So for step three, the first uh, rule is, Horizontal lines are drawn between barriers. So when you want to go from one barrier to another, we will do horizontal lines. The second is vertical lines are at each barrier that uh, applies So it can apply either success or it can have a failure of the barrier. Just leave some space here. If there is success, we use an upward vertical line. This is upward line. If there is a failure, we use downward vertical line. Now the upward vertical line or the success denotes the non-occurrence. or operation as the name shows it is success so it will showing you that it is operating
if it is a failure your line should be downward and this will show the occurrence or failure in general so when we have success we will have upward vertical line when we have the failure we will have a downward vertical line books i will go in the next slide please Now I'm going to give you a very rough example of uh, event tree and then we will go on some more engineering based uh, drawings. This is my initiating. Event. Which I'm also saying as. Let's say IE. This is the accident, the consequences of which you want to find out. You start from here. This is my horizontal line. And for example, I have the very first barrier or the safety function over this point, for example. And uh, let's say in barrier number one. Once you start from initiating event, you this point, and now you decide about the success or the failure of your barrier. If it is a success of the barrier one, it will go straight here. And then you go to the next barrier. If it is the failure of the barrier, this will come down. And then you look for the next barrier. So this going up is the success of your barrier, success of uh, barrier one. And if you're going down, this is the failure of your barrier one. Now let's say I have uh, for initiating event, my frequency is lambda of A. It will have a value. This is my occurrence frequency for A, our initiating event. Occurrence uh, frequency. And uh, suppose that for the barrier one, I have uh, lambda b as the failure frequency. So for this barrier, let's suppose I have lambda of b. Lambda of b is uh, basically the per demand. We also call it uh, as uh, the unavailability of our safety function. I'm saying as barrier one, so unavailability of barrier one. Now, if this is the failure here, the probability with assigned to the failure of the barrier here will be lambda of b. And how do we find from our previous work? 
if you have the probability of success and the probability of the failure we add up both probabilities and those should be equals to one because there are two events here so this probability the success probability will be one minus lambda of b Now the outcomes of here of the barriers these are called as the con so this is my consequences let's say number one this is my consequences number two now how do we find the probabilities of consequences if you want to find probability of uh, your c2 what you need to do you will start from here and then you will approach towards the initiating event and whatever the, whatever the probabilities or the frequencies you have we just multiply them by that i mean to say this is the consequence here so let's write it down c denotes the consequences the probability of my consequences two will be i'm starting from here the first uh, barrier uh, it's only one barrier the probability is or the occurrence frequency is lambda of b and then i go to my initiating event the frequency here is lambda of a so this will be the product of your lambda b times your lambda of a And the same procedure applies here for C1. The probability of uh, C1 that will be equals to. So this is my very first uh, barrier uh, probability. So it will be 1 minus lambda of B. And try it with the next one, which is lambda of A. That's how you calculate your probability of the consequences. Folks, I need to go to the next slide, please. And just a small point before I go to the next slide. If you have the frequencies, occurrence frequencies, then this will be your occurrence frequency. If you're using the probabilities, then you will have these values as the probabilities. I'm going to draw an event tree and explain you a little bit uh, more complex calculation than what we have done previously. So, for example, this is my initiating event, and this is my first barrier. After the first barrier, it goes to the second barrier. So, this is my success of this barrier. It goes here. This is the failure of the second barrier. Let's label it. So we have the initiating event, i.e. Let's suppose on the top of this line we have the barrier number one. And the second barrier. barrier number two now the failure this is the failure of your initiating event this is the success of your initiating event so when this barrier one, number one fails the next thing it will go to the second barrier again there could be two possibilities in the second barrier either it could be success or it could be failure this is my success this is my and then you have the outcomes or the consequences. 
similarly this is my success and this is my failure let's say i will give them the name as uh, and we have the consequences here consequences or the outcomes suppose this is my c1 consequences resulting after this after this i have c2 the consequence of this is the c3 and the consequence of this or the outcome is c4 for example now if i assign some probabilities values here for example for initiating event my probability is uh, ie probability of initiating event and the barrier probability of the failure of the barrier is f1 for example this is the first uh, event and now this one will test so it will be 1 minus the probability of this one which is p of f1 We also see the complement function. So it is also says E of uh, F of 1 bar. It indicates the success, which is a bar. Now for the barrier 2, for example, this is my probability of uh, failure, which is for the second value, so I can write 2. And for success, I will subtract 1 out of this. It will be 1 minus P of F2. Now the same thing comes here. We have P of failure for barrier number 2. And for success, we just subtract 1 out of that. Probability of uh, failure of F2. If I want to find out uh, my probability of uh, consequence 1, so that should be, now let me change the color here and now because I'm interested to find out the consequence probability at this point, so I start from here, the very first probability that I'm receiving is 1 minus probability of your F2 that should be multiplied by now then you go down here and up to this point you will see this is your probability now 1 minus P of F2 so this should be multiplied by 1 minus P of F1 Then you go down and see your initiating event comes next. That is your of your initiating event. It should be multiplied by your initiating event. Probability of your initiating event. Now let's do for probability of C2. I will take a different color. Now, if I want to find out the probability of my C2, now I start from here, and the first probability which is coming is C of f of 2. So this will be your probability of f of 2 multiplied by then I go next from here the first probability is coming is this one 1 minus probability of your f2 no sorry f1 and then you look here the next probability is probability of initiating event so it should be multiplied by the probability of your initiating event so this is how you develop your uh, of the consequences this should be 1 minus p of 1 multiplied by 
probability of initiating event. Now, if I want to look for the C3, let's take a different color. So if I want to find out uh, the probability for my C3, that should be, I start from here, the first probability which is coming is one minus P of F of two, one minus P of F of two. Then I go here and see my next coming probability is P of one, which should be probability of your F1. And you keep doing this your initiating event probability. It is a probability of initiating event is P of I of E multiplied by P of I of E. So this is your probability for Now similarly, if I want to find out uh, the probability for my C4, so I start from here, the first probability I am receiving is P of F of 2, so that should be your P of F of 2, multiplied by, I am going next, and this is the probability that I have, probability of F of 1. And then we keep going until we reach our initiating event. So the probability for initiating event is P of I of E. So that should be multiplied by probability of your initiating event. You can also do the same procedure if you start from your initiating event and keep track of your C1. However, if it is a complex event tree, it will be very difficult. So what I recommend, doing the same procedure, starting from the consequence and go to your initiating event to find the probabilities. Folks, I need to go to the next slide, please. Now this example we use for uh, two barriers. However, if you have any complex barrier, any entry, for example, this is my initiating event. This is my first barrier. This is my second barrier. And this is my third barrier. And let's say this is the failure. This is my, this is my first barrier. This is my second barrier and this is my third barrier. I'm just taking an example to show you. Now the calculation procedure remain the same. So for this probability of your consequence, let's say I give it a name of C1, let's say that will be equal to this probability multiplied by this probability, multiplied by this probability, multiplied by probability of your initiating event. And the same is true for anyone, you can take it. So if I want to find out uh, probability of this, let's say this is my one, two, three, four, five, six, C6. So this probability should be this probability, multiplied by this probability, multiplied by this probability, multiplied by the initiating event probability. In this case, you have the four probabilities which are being multiplied. Now, one thing that you need to always check always check the line your method method methodology always check the accuracy if you add up all the probabilities of your consequences let's 
consequences from i is equals to 1 to n that should be equals to your probability of initiating event what does it mean basically you add up all these probabilities of your consequences and these probabilities should be equal to the sum of the sum of these consequence probabilities should be equal to the probability of your initiating event now i'm going to give you an example which will elaborate more over this folks i will go on the next slide please We will do one example here. Consider a diesel power rating. system in a hospital when normal power supply fields a detector switches on and starts three power generators starts three power generators Each diesel generator satisfies each diesel generator satisfies one third. of needs of hospital develop An event tree to investigate the possible consequences.
Now, what is the setup here? We have a normal power supply. And then we have a detector. And it is saying that it is one third. So this means three of them are in parallel. So if I say, let's say generator, Later one. This is my first generator. Generator two. And we have two. So these are in the parallel system. And then the power supply goes to the hospital. Books, I will go to the next slide, please. Now the information we have the failure probability failure probability of uh, normal power supply is 0 0.01 the failure probability failure probability of uh, detector is 0 0.0 zero one and the failure probability of generator is 0 0.05 now we need to draw the event tree for this books i will go in the next slide because i need space for the event tree now as you can see the failure of your normal power supply is the initiating event here so I will start uh, my initiating event here. This is my initiating event, which is the failure of normal power supply. This is what is my initiating event as IE. Now, what does it mean basically? 
to have the supply to the hospital, there should be no failure with the power supply. Now, the next barrier is the detector. So, let's say I have it written uh, as a detector. So, this is my initiating way. Now, the detector can success, can have a success or the failure. If it is a success, this goes up. If it is the failure, this goes down. So this is my success for the detector and this is my failure for the detector. If detector works, then it will go to the next barrier. So let's write down here. So this is the barrier. Then we have the generator 2. We have the generator 3. So these are the barriers here. So if detected is success, it goes to the next generator. Now there could be two possibilities. Either this could be a success or it could be a failure. This is the success of your this barrier, which is generator one, and this is the generator one barrier. If the generator one is a success, then it will go to the second barrier, the second generator, which is your third barrier. Now, again, over this point, I could have two possibilities. Either the generator 2 can work, which means it is the success, or it can fail. If generator 2 is success, it will go to your third generator. Again, there could be two possibilities. The generator 3 can work, which is the success, or it can fail. Now, to have the fuel power, all generators should work. So, this means this is the success, success, success of this. This is success. So, this Consequent in terms of the hospital power, let's say give it a name of C1. This will supply the complete power to the hospital. And how I know this? Because generator 3 is working, generator 2 is working, generator 1 is working. And if you recall from the statement, they had power supply of 1 by 3rd plus 1 by 3rd plus 1 by 3rd. So this one, this is what it makes it one. So this will supply the complete power to the hospital. However, in case generator third is failed and two and one are working, in this case, my consequence, let's say it is C2, the consequences will be only two generators are working. So it is, it will be one by third. 3 plus 1 that is equals to 2 by 3. 2 by 3 of the power will be supplied. Now let's come when the generator 2 is failed. If generator 2 is failed, it will still go to third barrier, which is uh, fourth barrier, sorry, which is generator 3. And there could be two possibilities. Either it could success or it could be failed. Now, if it is success, let's say I give it a name of the consequence C3. And now you can see that I have success of one generator, failure of the second, uh, uh, success of third generator, failure of the second generator, and success of the first generator. It will be good if you write down this F over here. So let's keep this F over there. Now, because I have uh, only two generators working here, the C3 should be again 2 by 3. It will supply two third power. 
in case your generator 3 is failed let's say we give it a name of uh, c4 and see how generators are available now this one is failed generator 3 generator 2 is failed as well however we have the success of generator 1 so this one should be 1 by 3 only so we can only fill up one by third needs of the hospital power. Now let's come to this barrier here. Now if generator one fit, it will be going to your second barrier, which is your G2. Now there could be again two possibilities could work or it could fail again this f we can write it down here now if your second generator is success then the barrier is generator 3 so there could be two possibilities again with this it could success it could be a failure Let's give it a name of this consequence as C and see how much power we can supply. So generator 3 is success, it is working, 2 is success and it is a failure of generator 1 only. So it will be 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 which gives you 2 by Now, in case of the failure of your third generator, we have one failure. The second generator is working, but the first one is failed at this point. So, let's give it a name of C6. And because only one generator, which is G2, is success, so it will be 1 by 3. Now, in case you have the failure of the second generator, it will go to the next barrier, which is my G3. Again, there could be two possibilities either or it can fail. Now, let's give it a name of uh, C7 and C8. Now, this is the success here. However, generator 2 and 1 have already failed. So, this will be my 1 by 3rd. This can supply 1 third of the power. For 8, my third generator is failed. My second generator is failed. Let's write it down here. And my first generator is failed. So, in this case, there will be no power supply to the hospital because all three generators have been failed. Now the last step left here, what will happen when the detector is failed? So if the detector is failed, there is no generator will be activated. So in that case, I will just take it down. The failure of this barrier will have no impact on the other barrier. So it will be my C9. And because there will be no power supply, I will write down as the C0. Now, if you look here, I have some consequences which are matching. For example, my C2 is the 2 by 3rd, same as uh, C3, 2 by 3rd, and same as C5. So, when we are finding our probabilities of the consequences, we can add up these probabilities. Folks, I need to go to the next slide, please. So the probability when we are 
complete power which were, we were denoting as uh, 1 there's only one probability associated with it which is c1 however the probability when we are supplying 2 by third of the power you have as i mentioned c2 consequence and then add up the consequence of your c3 and then we add up the consequence of c5 why because all these two three and five consequences two three and five consequences they have the same outcomes similarly we can look for the probability for one third of power supply that is equals to the sum of your probability for c4 event uh, c4 consequences the probability of c6 plus your probability of c7 because they have the same outcomes or consequences now the probability when supply means p will be zero that is equals to if i teach you to this event tree these are the only two events 8 and 9 which has the probabilities of 0. So we will add up those probabilities. Probability of uh, C8 plus your probability of C9. Now I'm going to calculate one uh, probability for you. The method will remain the same as I explained you previously. For example, we want to find out uh, the probability of your C2. That should be e so what we will do. I will go back to that uh, event tree and do the same procedure as we were doing before. Let me choose a different color here. Now I'm interested to find out for C probabilities. So this should be the probability for or failure probability of G3 times the success probability for G2 times the success probability of G1 times the success probability of your detector times your initiating event that's how we calculate it for c2 and i will write it down in the next step So this will be the six, uh, probability for your G times the probability the success probability of your G2 which is also denoted as uh, P of uh, G of 2 bar times the P of G of 1 bar times the probability of success of your detector times the probability of your initiating event. Now let me take you to the question here. So these are the failure probabilities for normal power supply it is 0 0.01. So what I will do, I will just write down here these probabilities. It is 0 0.1 
for detector my failure probability is 0 0.001 it should come here so detector failure probability is 0 0.001 so the success probability should be 1 minus this value. For this, my failure probability is 0 0.05. So this is uh, 0 0.05. I can find it out by subtracting 1 out of this. Now the same is true for the second generator failure probabilities, which is uh, 0 0.05. The success can be found out by subtracting it from 1. Similarly, this will be 0 0.05. And this will be 1 minus 0 0.05. For generator 3, the failure probability is the 0 0.05. The success can be found out by subtracting it from 1 and the same procedure you can apply for the test of them. You have the failure probability, you need to find the success by subtracting that from 1. Folks, I will go to the next slide and write down this result there. Now, because I'm interested for C2, it should be the product of 0 0.05 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.05 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.05 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.001 multiplied by 0 0.01, which is the probability of my initiating event. That's what I will do in the next slide. Come here and this will be 0 0.05 multiplied by, we are talking about the success here, it will be 1 minus 0 0.05. Here, one is a success again, according to the event tree, it will be 1 minus 0 0.05. And this is the success of your detector, it will be subtracted, the failure probability should be subtracted from 1. 1 minus 0 0.001 times the probability of your initiating event, which is 0 0.01. Now, here you will get the answer of uh, 4.50 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 4. That is the probability of your C2. Now, with the same principle, you will calculate uh, the rest of the probabilities and find out your probability for 2 by 3. Similarly, for C4, C2, C7, C8, C9, and C1. Once you find out these probabilities and you add them all, so i this time is ranging from your one two we have nine consequences that uh, some of the probability uh, probabilities of your consequences that should be equal to your probability of initiating event this is what will verify your results now if you have a complex uh, event tree you can use uh, microsoft excel for the calculations or you can use a software which is the event tree analysis Event tree analysis. This software is from the same company as we did for the fall tree. This comes from Isocraft.
folks i will stop it here and we'll take your questions if you have any okay seen asked me could it also be mitigation uh seen can you specify which slide you meant to ask about this Yes, barriers are meant uh, to mitigate uh, your disasters, basically. Yes. Folks, is there any more question? Now, everything that we are doing from uh, this is the same book for your faulty analysis. So, let me write down here. The book title is The Assessment of Power system reliability methods and applications. methods and applications this is written by marco cp and the chapter that uh, you need to study is chapter number six You will see he is using uh, too many examples to elaborate uh, inventory and he's also performing calculations over this. Now what I will do when I will upload this uh, lecture, I will also upload this chapter number six so that you don't have to go through the library and waste your time. Folks, is there any more question for today? Before you go, I just need to mention two things. If this is my initiating event, and this is coming from let's say a fall tree i'm just making a very rough fall tree here this is my basic event for example this is my basic event for example i just want to tell you something so for example, this part is my fall tree here and from the initiating event, I have the event tree for example. This is a very rough example of your event tree. Folks, this ki kind of the analysis is what we called as bow tie diagram.
So it is a combination of your fall tree and your event tree. This kind of the diagram we study in advanced courses, just safety and risk engineering courses. So I just wanted to share this with you. And uh, one last announcement to know this on December 11 and 12, you have your final exam. of uh, ENGI 9411. Folks, are there any more questions for me or? Seems like you don't have any questions. So I will let you go and uh, have a very good weekend. Just go through the lecture. If you have any question, please drop me an email and I will be happy to assist you. Thank you and have a good weekend.